Hoffman at the Green Boater TV, and today I'm very pleased to invite Ria Rao of Yachting International Radio. Welcome, Ria. Hi, Bruno. Thank you so much for having me. It is so great to connect with you finally. You are so busy with your platform, hosting all kinds of shows around the world uh, focused on the marine industry. And I think it's just timely at this point in our crazy world to just figure out a little bit about what's going on in the yachting industry. Well, I mean, it, it definitely has come to a fell swoop stop at the moment because, of course, it is the Mediterranean season. We have seen that, um, you know, now is we'd be gearing up for the Palma Yacht Show coming up first. Um, that has now been changed, postponed in the hope that it is postponed. Nobody really knows. We're just seeing straight across Europe, we're seeing events being canceled one after the other, after the other, after the other. They're pushing them all back into the fall, but that's not gonna happen either. Even if we do see an eradication of this virus by then, you're not gonna be able to have all of those yacht shows that are generally spread out throughout the entire Mediterranean season happening in one fell swoop within a month, you know, in the fall, it's not gonna happen. So we'll see how that pans out. Maria, just before we begin uh, to get some perspective from you, uh, could you just give us a little introduction into uh, Yachting International Radio and some of the platforms that you're uh, out creating content for? Well, I started Yachting International Radio up uh, about a year and a little bit ago. Um, I saw that there was a need in the marketplace for some, some, I don't know, a platform that had a real voice that was a little bit more real than a lot of the glitz and glamour that you see out there. Something that was balanced reporting. I've been in the media industry for 30 years. You tend to see a lot of things that are really glossy. And in order to do balanced reporting and balanced journalism, you have to show all sides of things. And I find in today's day and age, that's just not happening. So I started up this platform and I have a variety of different shows and a variety of different contributors around the world. One side, I have the luxury aspect, which of course we all know exists in yachting. It's, it's you know, the, the one thing that everybody does, you know, focus on. But on the other side, um, I have a woman by the name of Miriam from Yachts Mermaids. And she is based out of the United States and she does a show called Uncensored. Um, and this show is all that is dark, deep and ugly. Um, so she really does dig up the worst of the worst. Um, and I find it, it makes things absolutely phenomenal. And right in the middle, um, we have something that is very near and dear to me is uh, Kira Rathbone um, of The Green Stewardess. She is, does my eco tips show. Um, an absolutely phenomenal girl. Her, she's got products that are so great for the environment. And she lets us all know how we all can do a little bit of our part in everyday life in order to make our planet a better place. Since you are in touch with so many different dimensions in the yachting industry from yachties, uh, yacht stewarded suppliers, marinas, what is your sense of um, how the yachting industry is coping during this time? Well, I think there's a lot of uncertainty because I, this is something that can't be controlled. And as we know, businesses, and when you're talking about people with a lot of money, they're used to having control over everything. And this is something that nobody has any control over. Um, we're seeing yards that were continuing to operate when maybe they shouldn't have. Now those yards are slowly getting shut down because they're saying that this just isn't stopping. This the only way to stop this is to shut those yards down. My biggest concern is the crew, because crew travel from all over the world when they come here when the Mediterranean season starts. They head over to the U.S. when the U.S. season starts. They have spent a lot of money getting every ticket that they need and every ticket that a sea school manages to sell them. And then they book their flights and then they book their crew houses. And this is all done months in advance. And so some of those crew that have spent the last year of every penny of their money that they ever saved or earned or their parents' money or anybody, they, they're already here and now they're in lockdown and they're not capable of finding a job. So I think for me, the biggest impact is the people, the feet on the ground. It's the little guy that is going to be the biggest impacted because they are the ones that depend month by month on the kind of money that they can make here. We're going to see some small companies go down, but governments are jumping in and they're saying, you know, whether it be the auditing industry or any other industry, 
they're saying, we're going to give you a bit of a bailout where, you know, it's there, but yachties by the very nature of what they do are nomads. So if you've got a South African sitting in Palma de Mallorca or sitting in Italy, um, who is 19 years old, who literally has nothing left, who's going to help him or her? Yes. And as you said, you know, they, they've chosen this life of nomadic proportion. They um, now, with all the airlines shutting down, probably cannot fly. Um, yeah. They still have a responsibility to work. And yet they're probably sensing a little, well, quite a bit of loneliness. And uh, they don't have the support network of, say, close friends and family, even though they could tie in with the internet. But I would imagine, you know, we, we tend to look at the super yacht industry as sort of, this, they're immune to everything. But really, um, they rely, just like any other tourism-based, service-based business, on real people that yeah. are trying to deal with real life. It's got to be, it's got to be hurting them for sure. It is. And I mean, you know, even the small shore-based businesses that, that are support, you see that some of the provisioning companies are getting a little bit nervous. It's not the bigger companies that are shore-based support. They've made enough money that, they, you know, they're going to hurt for sure, yeah. but they can weather a bit of a storm. Yeah. It's those mom and pop organizations that rely on the Mediterranean season to be a good one every year. And they live okay for the rest of the year. Yeah. But they need that full Mediterranean season in order to make it for the rest of the year. And now already we are seeing that it's going to be shut down. Uh, for example, here in Spain, we are now looking to be shut down until the 12th of April. We found out this morning. Uh, France, they have shut down. They're on lockdown. Um, they have a curfew overnight now from 10 o'clock at night until 5 o'clock in the morning. Not sure where they're headed next because they were a step behind Spain in, in sort of implementing lockdown measures. Um, Italy, they have now said that yards are locked down as of today. Um, so you see straight across the Med and the French Riviera that, you know, this, this could go on. It, it, we initially started with a two-week period here in Spain, and now it's been extended within a week. It's already been extended an extra two weeks. I understand as well some port authorities, what we call them in North America, are shutting down. So they're not even allowing yachts to come in. Obviously, it's affected cruise ships. Um, but I imagine the Mediterranean is pretty quiet these days. There are no yachts moving around. Well, no, because the, the problem is, is that you just don't know from day to day whether or not that port is going to shut or open. Yeah. Um, if you leave the port where, you're, where you have safe harbor or a berth, and, and all of a sudden you're out in the bed and you run out of provisions and you need to go back, who knows who's going to take you that day because things yeah. are changing so quickly. So life aboard for uh, the people who are servicing these yachts, as you mentioned, these, these people who are uh, vulnerable, how are they coping internally? Like well, I think the nature of the business, I mean, especially these yachts that go out to do long excursions or crossings, um, they're used to being sort of sequestered aboard, as it were. That's their lifestyle. They are on a yacht, and they're on a yacht sometimes for a month and a half, two months at a time. Um, if you're you know, new to that yacht, and it depends on the boss, you might not ever be allowed off of that yacht while you're working. So it's part of that type of business. The biggest worry is, is how they're maintaining, you know, what if somebody is sick? What if somebody went provisioning or brought the disease on board, or the virus on board? Um, and there's a tip on my YouTube channel, uh, Kira Rathbone from the Green Stewardess, actually. She did um, a lovely, really interesting chat. Um, head on over there and check it out. But just even ways to, you know, when you're coughing, to cough into your elbow, um, making sure you have hand sanitizer, tips on how to make your own. Um, you know, it's just, it's just being sensible, you know, being really sensible about everything you do. And I think probably crew that are on board are safer than the rest of us, to be honest, because you can call up a provisioning company. The provisioning company will drop it off on deck. Yeah. You clean that off with whatever, you know, with, with your sanitizer, um, take it in, and, and you guys are laughing. Yeah, in my community off the coast of British Columbia, there are many 30-somethings that have got a, you know, a 30 to 40-foot sailboat, and they've provisioned, and they're just sailing up north. They're going to find a little bay somewhere, take the guitar and their dog. Uh, they've got supplies, water makers, you know, fishing rod, and uh, we're, you know, entering into our boating season here. So for some of those people, you know, they say uh, self-isolating here is actually a luxury. They're finally able, they don't have jobs. 
because they, that's yeah. been shut down. So uh, many people are uh, taking this opportunity to actually get on their boat, get out and get away. Well, and I mean, the, the nice thing about being in Canada is that you do have so much area that you can do that in. Um, the Mediterranean is not so easy. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can't just get on your boat and sail and find somewhere that nobody else is going to be because you're pretty much guaranteed there's going to be about 10 other people in that same place. In your discussion with some of the marinas and some of the people that are really in the business of the super yacht industry, uh, which generates billions of dollars, what are they saying about what life is going to look like when we come out of this? Well, to be absolutely honest with you, no one's saying much of anything. Hmm. Because I don't think they specifically know. They don't want to create fear. They don't want to. It's just such an unknown thing at the moment. I mean, it's really hard for anybody to have any sort of forward looking onto this whole epidemic because it's just happened in two weeks. But it is interesting in the boating industry, as you mentioned, you know, for the crew, they're used to being alone for months at time to be self-sufficient. Uh, yeah. And so part of this is actually in some ways a little bit easier for the boating community because their environment is much more controlled. They'll be the, the people on board. They'll probably be the safest if they have, if they don't end up having a crew member that has carried the virus on board. Yeah. That is the biggest fear because, you know, once again, what keeps them the safest is probably also what is going to make it the most dangerous. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. I think a lot of the yachty crews, they're younger, they're fit, they're healthy, um, but they're not immune. And uh, I, I think it is one of the concerns that, uh, you know, they need to also practice ways in which they can, you know, say what happens if somebody gets sick on board. There was a discussion the other day. I'm part of a group, and if anybody is actually interested in the boating community of tips and, and wanting to find out what's going on, it's on Instagram, and it's called COVID-19 Yachty Support. Um, go sign up on Instagram and check it out because whatever's happening around the world they're letting everybody know these are these are a group of people that literally are in the yachting community from around the world one of these people were saying um, that they got a phone call from a crew member that was quarantined in a cabin on a yacht and he had been there for a week and a half and they wouldn't let him leave that's exactly and he was complaining but that's exactly what they should have done that was the captain made all the right choices and all the right decisions. And he was saying, but I don't, you know, I had a fever and I had this and I had that. And um, they don't have any test kits here, but th we think that, you know, they think that I have the virus. And, and so they won't let me out of my state. You know, he was making it, but that's just the reality. And the captain thinking about his crew was saying, you know, I'm sorry, but this is where you have to be. And this is where you have to stay. And it's for the safety of everybody, including yourself. You have to actually enforce, and this captain, kudos to him, and hopefully other captains are looking at the safety of their crew from that point of view as well. Unfortunately for one person, it's gonna make his life a little bit odd, but for the respect and responsibility they have for the safety of their crew, it's absolutely necessary. Well, you know, it's something that I have to reiterate. The fact is, this is unprecedented. We aren't used to, it, it's almost unbelievable. It's like something out of a movie. For sure it is something out of a movie. Italy shows us something. If they had done a lockdown a lot quicker, and if the Italian people in general had done the lockdown appropriately, because part of the reason the lockdown didn't work was because the Italians themselves, very social people, much like all of Spain and, and Portugal and France and you know, very, very sort of social people like to be out, like to drink their wine. What they did is as soon as their, their jobs got locked down, they treated it as a big old vacation. And they started going here and vacationing with friends and family and big dinners and big parties. And the next thing you know, everyone's getting sick and people are dying. What I'm very thankful for is that here in the Valley of Eric Islands, I'm in Mallorca, people listened. They at midnight, that Saturday night, we were locked down. And literally, the next day you woke up and it was like it was a ghost town. People go out only to get groceries or to the pharmacy. You know, there's essential services and tobacconists are open because that's considered an essential service in Europe. Only essential services are open. When I went into the grocery store today, for example, they were only allowing a certain amount of people into the store. Everybody got a pair of rubber gloves, not rubber like those thin plastic gloves 
and you had to wash your hands with the sanitizer that they had right there provided for you before you could go into the store and you had to line up a good 10 feet apart before you could actually go in because you know, they were sort of monitoring who was coming in and who was going out. And throughout the entire store, if people didn't have masks because we run out of masks. There, you can't buy masks here. They're literally run out. The hospitals don't even have enough masks. So when you go into the store, you literally wait, you stand back and you wait for somebody else to walk by if they're walking by. It's just, it, it's a different reality. And, but we're doing it here and we're doing it very willingly. And if somebody steps out of line here, I can guarantee you that one of the neighbors is going to be out there telling them exactly what they think and calling, even calling the police, you know? It is encouraging to hear, um, even though it is severe, um, it, is, it is something I think that the whole world has to take notice of and implement. What people don't realize is that everywhere you go, you're in touch with something that somebody else has touched. Part of the biggest problem is that they're, well, I'm young and healthy. Well, yeah but you could be a carrier. And what if you went to grandma's house tomorrow That's and right. she ended up dying because you brought that virus into it. You know, I think that if we all pay attention and do a proper lockdown, that we're gonna see the outside of this within a few months, but we have to suck it up for the short term in order to see long-term gain. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And yeah, and in the yachting world, as you said earlier, you know, they're used to being alone and they're used to practices perhaps that are a little bit different than ours. Well, I think, you know, for me, what I've seen so far with the reactions that I've got, the only issues that any of the yachting community has had has been the shipyards themselves. They have pushed it a little bit further than they maybe should have as How far so? as continuing work. Uh, well, you know, they didn't stop. There were some companies within those shipyards that decided that they were going to comply with the lockdown. They didn't have to, it wasn't by law at that stage, but some of the companies said, you know what? No, we care for our workers, we care for ourselves. We're gonna shut down and walk away and let's see if we can get a handle on this. And then others companies that didn't. Um, and I, you know, for me, that was the only thing that I, I think in the yachting industry was not a good response. But the rest of it, I am seeing, you know, right from owners to brokers, to management companies, to shipbuilders, the community is coming together. It's always been a really tight community. It's always been a really close community. They're coming together. They're working with one another. They're supporting one another. They're trying to help each other out. Um, and I think if any industry can kick back out of this complete chaotic time that we find ourselves in, I think the auditing industry and the boating industry will be the first ones to come out the other side. I agree. It is a, it is an, a network of people that like to share yeah. No, it's nice to have that contact and it's nice to keep in touch with other people. And really, I mean, you know, I really hope that Canada and the U.S. take the steps that Europe has taken and, and maybe we can actually, you know, come July, start living our lives again the way we, we should be. Yes. Yeah. With perhaps a, a more of a appreciation for what's important and the respect of others. Well, the, the nice thing is the environment has really seen, I, I, I had to laugh, you know, you've got to find positives in, in everything negative. And I was saying to my kids the other day, I think the, the world, mother nature has just gained 20 years on her life, you know? You know, we're, we're just saying, I can see stars at night, you know? I couldn't see stars before. You hear the birds more. I mean, I, I think there's just, there's going to be some healing. The world is, the, the yeah. universe is, Having she got tired of hearing us talk and decided to do something about it herself, you know. As you uh, look look ahead for the next few weeks or so, what do you have planned on Yachting International Radio? Well, I have um, a mental health series that happens every single Wednesday morning. Um, I think, which is really really important, uh, especially in today's day and age. Uh, a wonderful lady by the name of Karen Rayson, uh, the crew coach out of Australia. Um, and she helps us. We've had some great talks on meditation and just things that will really sort of pull you back into yourself in, in the times that we see ahead. Um, of course, Marian is, is uh, sending her uncensored. That is definitely one to tune in. If you uh, are offended by language, <laughs> don't watch. Well, yeah, it, it, it also focuses on things that nobody talks about, like rape on board and sexual harassment, um, bullying, um, you know, suicide, you know, mental health, the dark side of mental health. 
right. um, the really, really bad things that happen yeah. in life, but nobody ever talks about in the yachting industry. Yeah. And, you know, unless things get talked about, they will never, ever change. Um, so that's what that show was set up to do. And that's what that show is doing. People are talking on board online has now expressed interest and they're going to be highlighting that they are more of a news magazine style, um, for the auditing industry. Um, and so they're going to be writing the stories that she airs for me. Are um, the majority of crew members uh, aboard these super yachts that are affected? Are they female? Yes, it's. I would say probably 75%, 25%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it happens, it happens both ways, in, in, sure. in any day of the year, anywhere. Uh, but in yachting, it, it has been traditional that uh, women were objectified, for sure. Women weren't taken seriously. I mean, even as far off as, you know, a year ago at the Monaco Yacht Show, I had somebody say to me, you know, we've still got women that are told they have to wear these really, really short shorts and these, you know, exposing outfits. And they've got, you know, men were still touching their body parts as they walked by. And here we are 2019. So these things have to be addressed. It, it really does have to be addressed and has to be talked about. And, and so many people were afraid. And I think they were afraid because they were afraid that they would lose any form of income out of the yachting industry because the good old boys club still kind of controls it. Yeah. Things are shifting though. I mean, we're coming into a new generation. The ultra high net worth individuals are a new de generation. We're seeing the yacht owners being 35, 45, 50 years old. They are going on excursions with their families. Um, it's not that Greek shipping magnet who is, you know, 75 years old and 20 prostitutes in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea anymore. Wow. These are movers, these are shakers, these are people that have two weeks, they want to go and they want to experience something absolutely phenomenal. I was talking to um, the sales manager of Triton Submarines just the other day. Um, you know, they are building subs for everyone now. You want a sub for one, we've, we've got a sub for one. You want a sub for two, we've got a sub for two. A sub for 12, we've got that too. So this is what they're wanting. And the reason they're wanting that is because they want to explore the deep. Um, so the industry is changing and the attitudes are changing. And now is the time for that conversation. And, you know, hopefully in the years that come and the next generation that comes after, these issues aren't going to be things that are going to have to be dealt with. We're always going to have the bad side of society. We're always going to have people that don't do the right thing. Yes. That's never going to change. We're human beings. None of us are perfect, yes. but I think it's not going to be hidden anymore. And it's not going to be as often because people are going to be more aware. Yeah. Well, and thanks to, um, people like yourself and the platform that you've built gives a voice and sheds light and empowers people who weren't able to have a voice. And like you said, you know, the stigma around the yachting industry, one of the, you know, one of this is where everybody can do whatever they want. And we've seen movies about that. Um, yeah. It's, it's so comforting to hear um, that things are changing and, and thank you for the voice that you're giving to these people and shedding light. I look forward to um, more of the content that you're putting out and promoting that through our community. Yeah, I'm, I'm so blessed in what I do because I come across these people that share my passions because for me, uh, I don't even think I told you that, for me, part of Yachting International Radio was because I wanted to champion women and I wanted to champion the environment. Yeah. And I have managed in a year and a bit to meet some of the most inspiring people um, that fall into both of those categories, sometimes one, sometimes the other, and, and more often than not both. Um, so I feel so incredibly privileged to be exactly where I am. Ria, you have a lot to do. You've got um, um, enough things on your plate. So I do want to just express the, uh, the appreciation from the Green Boater and our community for the time you've taken during these crazy times. I wish you all the best. Stay safe. And as you continue to speak with other people in the industry, thank you for sharing the information uh, to be authentic. Uh, and please pass on to uh, anybody that you're in contact with that we're thinking about, all of you over there in the Mediterranean. It is a war zone, but it's people like you are shedding some light and hope. And um, I know that we will get through this. I know that we stick together. It will bring out the best in people. And uh, I thank you for the information you're able to share. Thank you so much, Ria. Thank you very much, Bruno, for having me on. And to all the green boaters out there, I hope you have a terrific season. And maybe once this is all over, I'll manage to come back to Canada and 
some of you can take me out on your boat. <laughs> Until next time, stay safe on the water and try to do your part to help create the ocean you love. We'll talk to you soon.